from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the generosity of an anonymous donor from Sherwood Park, Alberta. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of her family, especially for her husband who passed away four years ago, for the souls in purgatory who have no one to pray for them, and a special intention for her son. Our thanks to our donor for making it possible for thousands of the faithful across Canada to begin a new week with this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me saying, gird up your loins, stand up and tell the people everything that I command you. Do not break down before them or I will break you before them. And I for my part have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wheel against the whole world, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. But John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that John was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. The soldier went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. John the Baptist was a great man. Jesus said there was none greater up to that time. And yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven was greater than he. He didn't mean that John wasn't going to heaven. John wasn't in heaven. John is in heaven with Moses, with Abraham, with the great prophets, with all those women and men who lived long before Jesus. What Jesus meant when he said he was that uh, the least in the kingdom of heaven was greater than he was that John was going to die before Jesus did. Before Jesus died, before he rose from the dead, before he ascended into heaven and sent his Holy Spirit, before he told his disciples to go out, make disciples of all nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All those things that were going to open up the kingdom of heaven, the gates of the kingdom of heaven, so all people could start to come, and they were going to happen after John had died. He was a great man. The people you know, but John was among the the waiting. The people had been waiting a long time. They'd been waiting for centuries for the Messiah. And the human race had been waiting a much longer time, eons and eons, for God to repair the damage done by sin. You know, when you wait that long, it's hard. It's easy to lose faith. Now, the Jewish people could look back and see other promises that God had fulfilled. He told Abraham that the children of Abraham and Sarah would become a great nation, and God did it. And he said that he was going to rescue them from Egypt, and he did it. And he said he was going to give them a land all their own, and he did it. And when, he, when they lost that land, he promised that he'd get them back, get it back for them, and he did it. So that strengthened their faith. God kept his promises. But then, John came and said, the wait is over. It's here. The kingdom of heaven 
is at hand. It was his honor and privilege to be the one to say, it's here. He's come. And Jesus came, and we were so blessed because we can look back as we're awaiting, and it's hard to wait for what God will do next, and it's hard, and sometimes we're tempted to lose faith, but we can look back on the big promise, and God kept it. And the kept promise was so much more than we could have ever imagined that God sent his only son as our Savior. And he was so ours that he felt what we feel, he suffered what we suffer, and he died the way we die. And he rose again, like we will, we hope, because God keeps his promises. But today, we celebrate the beheading of John the Baptist. Now, you'd think a great man, that God would give a great man a noble end, that there would be final words recorded for pros posterity. There were no final words. It just happened. The prison door opened. A soldier came in grabbed John by the hair, pulled out his sword, and cut off his head. It was to be the last dish served at the birthday banquet of the king. And the king didn't even do it because John had told him, you can't have your mother's wife. He did it because he'd made a foolish promise to a teenage girl with an angry mother. John died, a low death, a death nobody paid much attention to. The only thing that made John's death noble was that it was so much like Jesus' death. Now, Jesus did have last words from the cross, but he died because an angry mob wouldn't let Pilate let him go. A mob egged on by a few people that hated Jesus. I bet if you asked all the members of that crowd the day after, why did you do it? They'd have a hard time saying what got into them. It was so much a matter of a moment. And Jesus, the greatest of all, was dead. And he rose from the dead. Now, John, God gave John a very humble death because John had been a very humble man. He was alone. He would sent all his followers to Jesus saying, he must increase and I must decrease. He was willing to be alone, to be there in that prison because he stood up for his principles. He was willing to do that. And he died. He died a very tragic, a simple, kind of a funny death, almost a funny death, because a girl danced well. It's funny, you know, but God said, those who humble themselves will be exalted. And God always keeps his promises. Let us take a moment now to mention those intentions for which we wish to pray at this Eucharist. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth, for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for this community here and for the community that's joining us through television and especially for the intentions they've sent us in asking us to pray for them. All together as this one community throughout the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creations, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths. As taught by that voice crying in the desert, said John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to hear, to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. So with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere for what it signifies the saving sacrament we have received, and even more, may rejoice at its clear effects in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, Please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details.